You know, long before genetically modified spiders could do such wonderful things, it was always radiation that made the superhero. Be it spiders. It's the spider. The one that bit me. He must have become radioactive. And when his venom reached my bloodstream, I've absorbed the proportionate power and abilities of a living spider. Or radiation waves. Exposure to a high energy cosmic storm. Your entire biophysical structure is changing. Or the odd gamma ray overdose. I am a god, you dull creature. And I will not be bullied by that. God. Even Godzilla put his radioactive fire to some good use. <laughs> yeah, in the good old days, it was always radiation that made the superhero. But what would it look like if you were in the middle of a real radioactive beam? Say, for instance, inside a nuclear reactor, looking down one of the most intense neutron beams on the planet. Well, that's what you're going to find out in this video. Now, in this video, I've got one of these radiation meters that, to use the <laughs> technical term, goes clickety-click when there's radiation about. This should be properly active. Okay. There's only beaters, so I can get away here. That's until it reaches a certain threshold, maybe a couple of hundred times background, when it just gives up counting altogether and just goes straight to the alarm. Now, in order to prevent people from accidentally irradiating themselves with these very intense neutron beams, there's a series of safety interlocks. That is, in order for me to turn the beam on, I need to push a button, check that there's no one inside the radiation zone, close a gate, and only then, when I'm on the correct side of all the radiation shielding, can I actually turn the key and push a button to open the shutter to the hot source of the nuclear reactor. Ah interlock just to make sure that we don't get irradiated <sighs> oh, I left the radiation meter in there the alarm might go off on that like instantly we'll see so what you'll hear first is a warning alarm that says that the beam shutter is about to open then you'll hear the shutter rise and then you'll hear <laughs> because I've accidentally left the radiation meter on top of the detector First of all, you'll hear it just clicking away ambiently in the background. And then when the beam is open, you'll hear it go clickety-click crazy. And then it'll go straight to the high radiation alarm. I left the radiation meter in there. The alarm might go off on that, like instantly. We'll see. And there you go. You're now immersed in one of the most intense neutron beams on this planet. So, what are you actually looking at here? Well, all of those flashes are radiation. But they're probably not neutrons. Well, not directly, anyway. You see, what I omitted to tell you earlier is that while this is one of the most intense neutron beams on this planet, the neutrons in this beam don't actually have that much kinetic energy. They're only traveling about 2 kilometers per second, which is about give or take seven times the speed of sound. I mean, just to put this into perspective, cameras are sensitive to visible light. And visible light has energies in the range of one to four electron volts per photon. Now, the neutrons here only have about a third of an electron volt of kinetic energy per particle. That means that their kinetic energy is only about a tenth of that of a photon of visible light. So I hear you ask, if these neutrons don't even have as much energy as visible light, then why all the worry with the safety interlocks and radiation meters and so on? Well, there's a problem. You see, neutrons can either get captured by a nucleus or they can spontaneously decay. And in both cases, when they do that, they release about a million electron volts. You will take that a million times the energy of a photon of light. And that's certainly enough to make the camera pixels go white. Indeed, it's enough energy to break bonds and to do a whole world of hurt to the cells in your living tissue. And that's why we have the interlocks, the Geiger counters, and the other safety features in such facilities. Curiously, though, when you go into space, you also get exposed to some pretty high-energy cosmic radiation. 
So the Apollo astronauts described that when they closed their eyes, they would periodically see flashes, only one every couple of minutes. But the flashes they described, about two-thirds of them, were spots, stars, and streaks. A remarkably similar phenomena to what you are seeing with this iPod immersed in this neutron beam. Anyway, I'll leave you to savour the moment of being immersed in one of the most intense neutron beams on this planet. Okay, that's it.